Hi, this is a video that is basically about the Kelvin scale. Um, the Kelvin scale is, uh, has the same units as the Celsius scale, but it starts from what we call absolute zero. Absolute zero is the lowest possible temperature uh, uh, that, that scientists theorize could, could happen. And we're going to use gas thermometers to introduce it. So first of all, what is a gas thermometer? A gas thermometer uh, measures the temperature on the basis of uh, a very simple relationship between temperature and pressure. Uh, other kinds of thermometers uh, are a little bit less reliable in the sense that you can, you can set a, uh, so there, we talked about a bimetallic uh, thermometer where you have two metals attached to each other, or a resistance uh, thermometer uh, that measures on the basis of, of the varying resistance. Um, the problem with these other thermometers is you can set the, the zero at the freezing point of water and you can set the hundred at the boiling point of water, but depending on the material, the, the, the measure of the units in between can, can vary a little bit. Uh, and so um, because gas thermometers are more, pre they're more precise because of this relationship between temperature and pressure. It was captured in uh, Gay-Lussac's law, which you may have encountered uh, in chemistry. Sometimes Gay-Lussac's law is expressed as P1 over T1 equals uh, P2 over T2. But we can do a little algebra, rearrange it, and it can come out this way. T2 over T1 equals P2 over P1. So there's a direct relationship between pressure and temperature uh, that can be used uh, to measure, use it, to use a gas thermometer to measure precisely. Um, and it doesn't matter what gas it is, especially at low density, um, in order to, uh, to measure the temperature. OK, so absolute zero. Um, if, so you can graph how pressure and temperature relate to each other for water or for carbon dioxide or for some other you know, substance. And so what happens is these are all lines because it's a direct relationship. But if you extrapolate back all of these different substances, um, when they hit a point, a bottom point, they all come together at negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Uh, it, this seems to be the lowest possible temperature, or at least it is the temperature where the pressure is zero. Uh, now, I, I, mistaken, I made a mistake in the previous video. I said that this was the temperature where there was no kinetic energy. Uh, but this section is very explicit uh, that because of quantum you know, vibrations and things like that, there is no such thing as zero uh, kinetic energy. Uh, but it is, the, it is the point of minimum total energy. That is to say, um, kinetic plus potential energy, this is the, the zero point, this is, or the lowest point, that is. Negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So Lord Kelvin, uh, in his honor, uh, the Kelvin scale uh, has been uh, created. The Kelvin scale basically has the same unit size as the Celsius scale, uh, but it, its zero is at negative 273.15 degrees uh, Celsius. So zero is right at that point. And so if you want to convert Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273.15 to whatever the, the Celsius temperature is. By the way, we don't say degrees Kelvin, we say Kelvins. Uh, so the freezing point of water is 273.15 Kelvins. Um, and this is the absolute temperature scale, where, uh, where that point, absolute zero, is the beginning of the scale. Uh, and as we said, then everything um, uh, moves up at Celsius units from there. OK, so how is the Kelvin scale um, defined? Well, you'll remember that the Celsius scale was calibrated by 0 and 100, uh, the freezing and boiling points of water. Uh, we needed two points uh, to define the Celsius scale. The Kelvin scale can be calibrated on a single temperature point, uh, a point called the triple point of water. And this, the triple point of water is the point at which all three states, solid, liquid, and gas, are kind of commingled there uh, together. And uh, this takes place, uh, this is calibrated on 610 pascals of pressure, or 0 .006. Uh, atmospheres of pressure. I'm pretty sure I've got that right, uh, but just so that I don't have to re-record this again, let me just make sure, uh, yes, 0.006 atmospheres. That's where that triple point is calibrated. 
uh, to, and it takes place at 0.1 degrees Celsius, or uh, 273.16 uh, kelvins is the triple point of water. Now once we have that, uh, we, can, uh, we can find out the temperature of a gas uh, if we know uh, the pressure, the, the pressure uh, that that gas has at the triple point of water um, and the pressure it is now. So uh, one of the problems uh, in uh, Young and Friedman, I'm looking here at um, uh, uh, 17.13 in the exercises, and it asks here, the pressure of a gas at the triple point of water uh, is 1.35 atmospheres. If its volume remains unchanged, what will its pressure be at the temperature at which CO2 so solidifies? Well, we can figure that out uh, because we know uh, the formula is T equals uh, 273.16 Kelvin times the ratio between uh, the pressure it's at uh, and the, triple po the pressure at the triple point of water. Um, so uh, here it tells us that the uh, 1.35 atmospheres is where it has, is the pressure it has at the triple point of water. Uh, we would then look up uh, what the pressure is uh, at, um, uh, no, we're solving for this pressure here, aren't we? Yeah, we're, we're solving for this pressure. So it tells us that the, uh, the pressure of the gas at the triple point of water is 1.3 atmospheres. Um, and so it, it says, what would its pressure be at the temperature at which CO2 solidifies? So we would look up, uh, we would look up the uh, freezing point of CO2 um, and make sure we have the right units and then solve for P. So there you have it, a little bit on uh, the, the Kelvin scale uh, as it relates to gas uh, thermometers.